Hello everyone, welcome to another video. In this video, I am going to show you a practical on how to create a custom AWS VPC from scratch and I am going to cover all the concepts okay, while I am creating this uh, VPC. So on my screen you can see there is a scenario. Okay. So uh, suppose you have joined as a DevOps engineer at company ABC. The company has an AWS account which you can access with administrator IAM permissions. Okay. You have been given a CIDR range. The meaning of CIDR range is the internet uh, address ranges that you can use or you can say the range of IP addresses that you can use with your custom VPC. So the range is uh, 10.0.0.0 slash 20. Okay. So uh, and there are some specific requirements uh, in this VPC that you have to follow. So this this entire CIDR range, it should be divided into four subnets, okay, of equal size, of course. And uh, you have to have two public subnets and two private subnets. And uh, these subnets should be spread across two availability zones or AZs inside the VPC. Then you have to create an internet gateway attached to the VPC, okay, of course, to allow bi-directional internet access to your resources and someone from outside to access the resources inside your VPC in the public subnet. Then you have to create a NAT gateway to allow the private EC2 instance. So, so we have to create one private EC2 instance also, which will reside in the, the private subnet. Okay. This EC2 instance should be able to download software updates from repository hosted on internet. And that is why we need a NAT gateway. All right. Then next is we have to create another EC2 instance. Okay. And this EC2 instance will work as bastion host or jump server. Now, what is the meaning of bastion host? So bastion host or a jump server is a server which uh you know a team uh, i mean uh, team admins use to ssh to it first and from there they access all the other uh, company servers or project servers so uh, this is a way to have secure access to your main servers okay so the whole point of having a bastion host or a jump server is no one should be able to directly access the main server. Okay. They should I mean, have a gateway in between. So this bastion host or jump server, it provides a gateway to the main servers. Okay. So only a few people, or you can say the main admins can only access this bastion host. And from there you can access all the other servers, but you cannot directly access the main servers from your laptop. Okay. So just remember this term sometimes uh, it can be asked in the interviews. Okay, what do you mean by a bastion host? So you can just say that it is a way to secure your main servers. So when you have to have uh, one bastion host, which you can use to SSH and from this server, you can access all the main servers. Okay, so you are reducing the, uh, uh, you know, the uh, region of accessing your main servers by having a bastion host in between. All right. So we are going to create this EC, we are going to create one EC2 Linux instance, which will work, uh, which, which will work as a bastion host and it will reside in the public subnet. Okay. I mean, why it will reside in the public subnet? Because since I am, I mean, I am going to SSH into this uh, Linux instance from my laptop and there's no gateway to the private network inside AWS from my laptop. Okay. And there's no, no gateway created right now. So this instance should be in the public subnet so that I can access it over public internet from my laptop. Okay. This is the reason we have to create this in the public subnet. Then you have to create the relevant security groups that you can attach to this private EC2 instance and the bastion EC2 instance. And then of course we have to uh, we have to create some route tables as well. Okay, I'm going to show you I mean uh, I mean all, all, uh, all the things in real on AWS Management Console. Okay, with all the concepts why we have to create 
these route tables why we have to get the security groups and all but this is the scenario that you have and uh, this is the type of scenario that you will actually get when you are actually working for a real company okay so let's start uh, to create this vpc so i have this architecture uh, that actually uh, says all the things that we just covered in in, in this slide so um, whatever has been mentioned here it's all has been designed in this diagram you can see so uh, let me just walk you through this architecture as well so here as you can see we have an aws region within an aws account okay because vpc is a regional service so a vpc will always always reside in one aws region okay so it can be any region of your choice okay so within within the region you have to create this vpc your custom vpc this uh purple line that you see is your vpc and inside the vpc you can see i have two availability zones as it was given in the slide so i have two availability zones 1a and 1b and within these two availability zones i have four subnets okay so uh, one public subnet in uh, availability zone 1a one public subnet in avail availability zone 1b similarly one private subnet in one availability uh, zone uh, 1a and other other in 1b then i also have one internet gateway which i am going to attach to the vpc so that the resources in the public sub, uh, subnet can access internet okay via internet gateway okay uh like this resource which is in, in in the in the public subnet it's an ec2 instance and if if it has to access internet the traffic should be routed using the internet gateway to go out to internet then i have one more ec2 ec2 instance which is in the private subnet okay now if uh, this ec2 instance has to download some updates from repository hosted on internet then i have to get one nat gateway in in the public subnet so the nat gateway is going to reside in the public subnet but it's going to help the resources in the private subnet to access internet okay so this is how uh, it's going to access the internet then i'm going to create one security group which i'm going to attach to the private instance and one more security group which i'm going to attach to the bastion host or the jump server okay uh and then i'll try to ssh into this ec2 instance from my laptop so this is me just assume that that this user is me and i'll try to access this ec2 instance from my laptop okay and then from here from here i will try to ssh into this machine okay so this is how this this bastion host works so uh, this is your uh, uh, vm that you use to ssh into and then from here you are going to access all the all the machines in your project or in your company okay so there is no way by which i can ssh to this machine from my laptop directly there is no route like this because we are only using this uh, nat gateway and uh, this nat gateway is going to provide access to resources from uh, inside of the vpc to outside but uh, no one from outside can initiate a connection in the uh, to, to to the resources in the private subnet so there is no way i can ssh like this the only way for me to to reach this main instance is i have to ssh to uh, this bastion host and from here i can ssh to this the private ec2 instance so this is all about it i hope this this diagram is clear to you if you have any doubt related to the architecture uh, you can just reach out to me in the comment section all right so let's start to create this uh, vpc now in my aws management console so here i'll search for the service vpc and let me just mark it as favorite so that it's visible in my favorite section as well and then i'll click on this service Okay. So this is my default VPC dashboard. Okay. Now to create a VPC, just click on create VPC button here. 
and uh, there are two options here vpc only and vpc and more if you are creating the vpc for the very first time and you're looking to learn all the concepts choose the first option vpc only because we are going to create all the other resources manually so that we can learn about it okay so use vpc only here and then just choose the name of this vpc you can write um, my vpc for example my vpc okay and then you have to give the ipv4 cider okay the the mean the meaning of cider is the range of ip addresses that you want to use to create resources in your in your vpc so if i go back to the slide and go back to the instructions given to us you can see there's a cider range given to us 10.0.0.0 slash 20 so we can just copy this from here and then just enter the cider range here okay one more important thing just remember when you are creating your custom vpc the cider block size must be between slash 16 and slash 28 okay the meaning of this slash 20 is if, if you're not aware it decides the host bits so when you are looking at an ip address so there are four octets so this is the first octet second octet third octet and fourth octet each octet has eight bits okay so when you see 20 which means 8 plus 16 plus 4 from this octet which means these are the host bits means this uh, these bits are are going to represent our network and the rest of the bits are for your host means I mean, you can use the ip addresses okay i'll try to cover this in another video where i i talk about the details of an ip address how this this uh, slash 20 work okay but since we are creating this vpc here I just want to give you a very basic idea but I mean you will get this range when you're trying to create this I mean, you will get this from the client or from uh, you know uh, the project team which uh, which needs this VPC okay so and this this slash 20 which is the which actually decides your your cider block size now the, the meaning of block size is I mean how many IP addresses you can have in your VPC so, so uh, uh, that is decided by this block size which which is represented here as slash 20 in our example but this range can only lie between slash 16 and slash 28 as it's given here remember this because it can be asked in the interviews okay now what is the block i mean what is the cider block size range of your custom vpc that is allowed in aws so it is it should be between slash 16 and slash 28 so slash 20 lies uh, between slash 16 and slash 28 just remember this for the in interview then uh, we don't have to do anything with ipv6 because we because we are using ipv4 addresses okay we, I mean, we are using ip version 4 we are we are not dealing with ipv6 at all so just let it be default then tenancy let it be default okay don't have to do anything with that and tags if you want you can add additional tags but i'll just i'll just keep it as name tag for now and i'm going to hit uh, hit create ppc So this is how simple it is to create a custom VPC in AWS. But of course, this is only the, the first step. Within this VPC, you have to create a number of resources, uh, 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 you know, um, before you can actually deploy your main resources. So your VPC is created. The next thing is you have to create a subnets in the VPC. Okay, now let's go back to the slide and see what all is given here. So as you can see, we have to have four subnets in this vpc two uh, public subnets and two private sub uh, two uh, private subnets spread across two availability zones okay and this is our main cider block that we uh, that we have been given okay the main cider range now how to do subnetting is another question okay i mean uh, you can do subnetting manually as well but i follow a very simple strategy and i think you uh, you you uh, 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 all can uh, 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 just learn it within a minute okay so i mean how to do a subnetting okay how to do subnetting when it when there's a requirement okay so whatever cider block range you have been given okay and here you can see this range has to be divided into four subnets this is given to us right so what we will do is so there are two there are two uh, URLs that I use 
so this is the the first one which i used to do subnetting okay how to do it so i can just open this so i uh, i've already opened this url here so uh, this is the url which you can use to do subnetting okay without you having to do anything manually so how to do it just put your main vpc side range here okay which is this one okay 10.0.0.0 slash 20 is the given vpc side range to us now in how many subnets do you want to divide it it's already given we have to divide this whole vpc side range into four subnets so so just choose four here like this when you do you will see this this uh, uh, side and, uh, uh, this notation change to 10.0.0.0 slash 22 which means this big cider range okay if if we have to if we have to divide this into four uh, different segments of equal size then this slash 20 has to change to slash 22 remember the lesser it is the bigger is the uh, this network okay so if if it was a, a slash 16 here that means a slash 16 is bigger than slash 20 okay so just remember this part also that slash i mean the the lesser the value of this slash the bigger will be your uh, this network size okay so the slash 22 is smaller to slash 20 so all all i'm saying is this big network of slash 20 okay if you want to divide it into four equal parts this slash 20 will change to slash 22 and what sub networks you have to use inside this are given in the uh, i mean, I mean uh, if you just scroll down you will see your subnet address also okay how to, how to use this let me just sh show you in practical so this is our, our our main vpc range and we have divided into four equal parts and and we, we now know that slash 20 has changed to slash 22 so what we have to do is just uh, go to your vpc console and inside this subnet section just click on subnets here then click on create subnet and then choose your vpc that you've created which was my vpc and then you have to specify the cider range of your subnet okay so each each subnet will have its own cider range which you can use All right, it's taking slightly longer. Okay, so <clears throat> then you have to choose the name of your subnet. So let's. So I'm. I'm I'll. I'll create uh, two public subnets and two private subnets as it is given in the sheet. Also, as you can see. We have to create two public subnets and two private subnets. So, whenever you are creating new subnets, just name the subnets so that you can identify just from the name whether it is a public subnet or a private subnet. Okay. So, what I'll do is I'll just name it as pub or I'll let uh, public 1a. This 1a represents the uh, availability zone here okay is uh, so as, as i'm in this us east one region which is in northern virginia i have six different availability zones in this uh, region so i can use any two okay so i am going to use 1a and 1b i'm going to show you okay so i mean I, I, uh, just after this name okay just after this name you have to choose the availability zone so here i'm going to use 1a as you can see i have six different availability zones that i can choose and i just need two if you go back to the slide it says these four subnets should be spread across just two availability zones so i have to use two availability zones out of these six so i'm using 1a and 1b okay so i'm, I'm naming this this subnet as 1a so that i can identify that this resides in 1a availability zone and here i have to choose the same availability zone so which is us east 1a like this and then i have to just uh, give the range of my subnet okay so the range of my subnet will be coming from this 
URL, okay, which I have used to do subnetting. So this big network has been divided into four equal parts, okay, and this is the subnet address of my first subnet. So you can just copy from here and then paste it here and uh, this uh, uh, slash uh, 20 will change to slash 22 like this. Okay, and to verify that this is the correct block size that you have to use for your subnet, what you can do is there is another URL which is cidr.xyz. So you can put your uh, slash 20 here. So as you can see, I have already given, I mean, I have already used this. So what you have to do is just write your main VPC CIDR range here. So it is 10.0.0.0 slash 20. Okay. And then just hit outside of it once and you will see the number of IP addresses which are available in this CIDR range. So as you can see in total inside my VPC, I have 4096 IP addresses that I can use. Okay. So to to divide this this big network into four parts, which means this IP address count should be divided into four parts as well. So if you just just use this calculator, you can see if I divide this this 4096 by 4, it is coming as 1024, which means each subnet can only have 1024 IP addresses. And if I go back to my VPC console, you can see when I use this slash 22, the IP addresses are coming as 1024 IP, which means I'm using the correct block size for my subnet. So this is the way to verify it. So I use these two URLs always to do subnetting and then to compare the IP addresses or just to verify that I'm using the right subnet range. If you have any doubts in these calculations, please put it in, in the comment section. I'll try to make another video on this one if it's needed or I'll just try to answer your queries in the comment section itself. Okay, so this is how I do subnetting. I think this is a, the most simplest way that you can use because you don't have to do any manual calculations on your own. You just have to use this URL to put the main VPC CIDR range and just choose the subnet and you will get the main block size and you get the main subnet address also. Okay, this is the easiest thing that you can do to do subnetting. All right. So here I am. I'm using this first subnet and uh, I've already given the name and I'll just click on create subnet. So this is going to create my first uh, public subnet inside my uh, custom VPC. Similarly, I have to create three more subnets. Okay, so I'll do create subnet again. I'll choose my VPC and I'm going to name this. Let's write pub like 1B. So I'm going to keep this in 1B because if you see the diagram also, this one public subnet should be in 1A and other public subnet should be in 1B. Okay. So I'm, I'm just trying to follow this architecture here. Okay. So, uh, so I, I have to draw this entire architecture into AWS. So if I go back, I'm using public 1B and the availability zone will be 1B as well. And uh, here I have to just give the CIDR range of my uh, the subnet, so which I can get from this URL. So you can use the second one, which is this one. Let's copy and go to your AWS Management Console and uh, just paste it and use slash 22. And once again, you will see 1024 IP addresses create subnet. So two public subnets are created. Now we have to create two uh, private subnets. Create subnet, select your VPC. This will be private 1A and uh, choose the availability zone as 1A and uh, go to this URL, copy this, this uh, subnet address, third one and uh, paste it here. Use slash 22 block size, it's going to give you one zero two five IP addresses and just click on create subnet. Then one more, click on create subnet, my VPC, private, 1B, and choose US East 1B and uh, copy this last subnet address, go here and paste it slash 22 and click create subnet. So we have created four subnets, okay, as per the diagram, two public subnets, two private subnets, spread across two availability zones. All right, all, all good so far. Then next is, 
next uh, you can just follow this if you if you just I mean, forget anything you can just go to this slide i'm i'm, I'm going to uh, I'm going to explain the concepts of custom VPC shortly, okay? But just remember that you have to get a VPC, you have to get your public and private subnets, then you have to get your custom route tables. Now, <clears throat> okay, so let's talk about some concepts of custom VPC, which are often asked in the interviews as well. So when you create your own custom VPC, you get three things by default. Remember this, you get a default route table, which is attached to your VPC, you get one default network access control list or NACL and you get a default security group created as well. Okay, so this question is, uh, uh, I mean, uh, it's a very uh, important question for interviews. So it is often asked that, um, what do you get by default when you create your custom VPC? So you get three things, you get a security group, you get an NACL and you get one default route table. Okay, now let's go back to AWS Management Console and see if these things are already created. So first we have to verify if I get one route table. So if I just click on route table section here, and if I just, hit refresh. So I can see uh, uh, we have two route tables. So this one route table is for the default VPC. Okay, I, I mean, I haven't spoken about default VPC much, but I'm going to talk about it in the next video. Okay, so this video is only dedicated to our custom VPC creation practical. Okay, so as you can see, there's one default route table, which was created. If you, if you remember, I haven't created any route table myself, but when I created the VPC, this route table was already created and this is attached to my VPC, you can see. If you click on this route table here, so you can see the default route here. So this the default route, it's, it says, if your uh, this, this uh, destination is 10.0.0.0 slash 20, then target is local. Okay, how to read this route table first, you should understand. So it means, if you want to go to this network, so this network is your destination. You have to go through this target. So uh, this target is local, which means if you have to communicate within the VPC, so this is our VPC side range, okay? The target is local, which means by default, the route table that we get with our VPC, uh, the resources can talk to each other within VPC by default, the meaning of this rule. Okay, because the destination is this, I mean, we want to communicate with this network and the target is local, which means the local network is allowed within the VPC by default. Okay, I mean, I, I, I did not get this route table, I did not get this rule, it was already there. So this is the default behavior of the default route table that we get with our custom VPC. Okay, so all the resources can communicate to each other within the VPC by default, remember this. Okay, so this is the route table. And if I go to subnet associations, remember this, each route, each subnet will be associated with a route table. It is a mandate, okay, always. Okay, so since I, I did not associate my subnets with any route table, so this is the default behavior, whatever subnets you create in your custom VPC, those subnets will associate with the default route table of the VPC. Okay, if I click on subnet associations, you will see uh, here, okay, subnets without explicit, uh, uh, without explicit associations, which means if you, don't, uh, if you don't attach a subnet to any route table, those subnets will be associated to the default route table of the VPC, which has happened in our case. I just created these four subnets Okay, I did not I did, I did not use any route table, but these uh, subnets have been associated with the default route table of the VPC. So this is a default behavior. Okay, so you, I mean, you have to remember all these concepts because in the interview, uh, these things are often asked to to uh, see I mean how much you know about the VPC, which is the core of AWS networking. Okay, so now what we will do is we are going to create our own route tables okay we are not going to use the default route table which is given with our vpc okay so this is a 
this is kind of a best practices in in, in uh, uh, AWS cloud that whenever you create your own VPC, always try to create your your uh, custom route tables and don't use the default route table. Okay, and always if you have two types of network like I mean public network and private network, okay, try to create two separate route tables and not one. So in this example, as you can see in the diagram, we need our public network as well okay and and we need our our uh, this private network as well so we are going to create two different route tables okay uh, I mean one will be for uh, resources in, in 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 this private subnet and the other one will be for the resources in the public subnets okay so let's try to create one sorry uh, two route tables so in the route table section just click on route table here click on create route table and just name the route table so let me uh, name it as uh, public uh, hyphen RT for route table, which means that it's going to have my uh, public routes. Okay, since I'm using internet gateway also, I'm going to get the internet gateway. Okay, so I, I have to use one internet gateway, uh, which I'm going to attach to this VPC, which means I have to have some internet connectivity in my VPC. So for that, I'm going to use this route table. Okay. Then I have to choose my VPC, which is my VPC, and then just click on create route table. Done. Then again, click on route table here and click on create route table. And, and this time you have to choose the private route table, private hyphen RT, select your VPC, click on create route table. So I've created two different route tables, one for private network and other one for uh, public network. All right. Now, as I mentioned, each subnet should, uh, should be associated with the route tables. Okay, so let's choose our route table. Let's choose the private route table here. Then click on subnet associations. Okay, then click on explicit uh, uh, subnet associations. Okay, because I want to uh, uh, explicitly associate two public subnets with my uh, public route table, right? So I'm going to click on edit subnet associations and I'm going to choose my two public subnets from here, public 1A and public 1B to be attached to my public route table. So just click on save associations. When you do that, you will see this route table has two subnet associated with it and the main route table will, will only have now two other subnets, which is, which is the private subnet. Okay. So since we have manually associated the two public subnets to our own route table okay so the two other others other subnets will be uh, i mean the two subnets will be removed from the default route table okay because one subnet can only be attached to one route table at a time okay i'll repeat one subnet can only be associated with one route table at a time so if you if you uh, associate a subnet with with a route table then the uh, the past association will be removed automatically. All right, so this is our, our public route table. Now let's do the same for our uh, this private route table. So click on this route table ID, the private one. Then again, click on subnet associations and then click on explicit subnet associations, edit subnet associations button, and then choose the, the two private subnets and click on save associations. If I go to subnet associations here of my of my private route table, you can see the two private subnets have been associated with my the private route table. This is done, right? Next, you can go to here if you if you have any doubts. So I, I've created the VPC, I've created the public and private subnets, I've created the two custom route tables. Now let's try to create one internet gateway, which is also part of our architecture. This one, okay? So we have to create one internet gateway. So just go back here go to internet gateway section internet gateways click on int create internet gateway choose the name you can do my hyphen igw click on create internet gateway it's done now when you create one internet gateway one one of your own you have to attach it to the to the vpc in which you want to use it okay so by default it is it is not attached to any vpc so either you can do it from actions or you can do from here. Okay, so just click on actions here, click on attach to VPC and then choose your VPC 
which is my vpc and just click on attach internet gateway so now this uh, this internet gateway has been attached to our custom vpc all right next we have to get one nat gateway also okay uh, you can always refer to the diagram we have one internet gateway we uh, we also have a nat gateway here in this example as you can see i have created two nat gateways okay one in this availability zone and the uh, other one in other availability zone so i mean why i have done this because uh, nat gateways are highly available or 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 uh, 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 redundant only within an availability zone okay so if if you follow aws's best practices it it always says that you should have one nat gateway per availability zone so in my case i am using two availability zones so i have to use two nat gateways one in each availability zone okay but in this example since this is only a demo i am going to create one one nat gateway and then uh, you, uh, i mean if you want to follow along i mean if you want if you want to follow the exact exact architecture you can create two nat gateways but just remember that nat gateways are going to cost you okay so it's going to increase your aws bill all right but i mean if you want to just learn you can just create one nat gateway and, and that is more than sufficient to learn how to create and attach and use a nat gateway all right so let's create one nat gateway here so i'll click on nat gateways click on create nat gateway and then choose the name so i'll do my ngw for nat gateway and then i'm going to select my uh, the subnet so if you remember i i told you that when you create a nat gateway you have to deploy it in one of the subnets okay so since this uh, this uh, nat gateway helps to have internet connectivity to our private resources and private subnet this nat gateway should be public okay so it should be deployed always in, in the public subnet remember this because this question is is also asked in the interviews okay so here i have to choose one uh, availability zone so if if i just try to follow the uh, this diagram i can see i am using this uh, nat gateway which is i mean uh, which will be used by my uh, uh, this private ec2 instance so this is in the 1a availability zone so here i can choose the 1a subnet okay the public subnet so which is uh, this one okay public 1a okay so this this uh, public 1a subnet is this one okay, public 1a where i am using this to be used with my private ec2 instance so i am using public 1a here okay then connectivity type of course you have this this private uh, this private connectivity also but the default behavior is a public and that's what we want to use here so let it be and then one more thing is when you create a nat gateway okay you have to create another resource con called elastic ip what is a, what is an elastic ip elastic ip is a public ip okay that is given by aws to us okay to use okay so since a nat gateway has to provide internet connectivity to private resources in private subnets it ha it also needs uh one public ip of its own okay so to to uh, do that aws gives us the option to attach an elastic ip so elastic ips are public ips okay given by aws to us to attach to our resources okay so just click on this allocate elastic ip and it's going to attach one uh, elastic ip on its own and this elastic ip will be uh we will have an public ip address which will be given to our nat gateway okay so just click on this uh, allocate elastic ip and that's it and just click on create net gateway okay so just remember again that uh, uh, net gateways are chargeable okay but anyways since i mean if you want to learn it you have to create it okay i mean uh, so just after creation of uh, this resource when you have you know get it the the uh, uh, entire architecture you can just i mean go ahead and delete it and uh, the billing will be stopped then and there all right so this this nat gateway is created now next so the, the next is ec2 instances and security groups also so uh, let's create the two security groups which are, which are given in the diagram okay so one will will be attached to our uh, the bastion host 
the other one will be attached to our private EC2 instance. So let's go to, uh, I mean, you can choose the security groups from VPC console also. Okay, VPC option is available in both uh, EC2 and security groups is also available in VPC also. So if you just scroll down, you can see security groups under security. So just click on security groups and uh, click on create security group. Okay, so let's just try to create the security group for our bastion host first. Okay, so this instance will be used by us to SSH into. Okay, so uh, which means that I have to allow SSH traffic from my laptop to this EC2 instance. Okay, which means if I go to this, if I try to create one security group, you can write bastion hyphen security group. Just copy and paste this name to, to description. Then choose the VPC. I want to use it in my VPC. Always remember, security groups are also related to VPCs. Okay, it cannot span VPCs, which means each security group, uh, I mean, works only in one VPC at a time. Okay, so I'm I'm going to deploy this security group in my VPC, and then I can choose the inbound rules. So since I want to SSH to the Bastion host, so uh. uh uh, 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 my laptop should be allowed to for uh, inbound access to this EC2 instance. So what I'll do is I'll click on this inbound rules add rule section and here I can use SSH and I can choose source as my IP. So here I have to just choose my IP and it's going to pick up my IP from my laptop okay so what i'm allowing is i'm allowing myself to ssh into this machine okay which, which is going to use the security group as as you can see in the diagram also so this is me i want to ssh to ec2 instance in the public submit so this security group should allow ssh from my ip okay so that is what i'm trying to do here and in the outbound rule i'm allowing everything which is a the default behavior okay so I'll let it be like that and just let me name it so i'm going to use bastion sg and click on create security group this is created now let's create another security group for the other instance which is the private ec2 instance in the private subnet so i'm going to get this security group as well so just go to your console again click on security groups click on create security group and then you can write it as private hyphen security group copy and paste the same name into description choose your vpc my vpc then what i want to allow here let's go back to the diagram i want to allow ssh from this instance right that's the only thing i want to allow at, at this point i want to allow ssh from this machine to this machine which means the uh, uh, inbound traffic to this EC2 instance should be allowed from this EC2 instance which is the bastion host on port 22 which is, which is SSH. So what I'll do is add rule, I'll choose SSH. Now to allow the traffic from an EC2 instance to another ec2 instance we generally use source as a security group of that instance which means i can allow the security group of my bastion host okay on the inbound of security group of this instance uh where is that SG, sorry, SG. Yeah. So what I'm trying to do is, I'm allowing SSH traffic from my Bastion host instance, right? That's what I want to do. So in this case, we generally refer to the security groups of the instance which we want to allow the traffic from. So I want to allow SSH to the to the private instance from my Bastion host instance. So I'll just choose a security group of Bastion host here, and I can write Bastion security group like this and on, on outbound i am allowing everything 
which is the default rule so let it be and then i can just use the name sorry name and capital and then just paste the name here private sg and click on create security group so two security groups are created one for private instance the other one for our bastion host which is the public instance all right this is done now let's try to create the ec2 instances so let's click on ec2 instance service All right, let's click on launch instance. Then choose the name of the instance. So I'm trying to create the Bastion instance first. So let's write Bastion only. Let's just write Bastion and choose the AMI. I'm going to use the Amazon Linux AMI, which is the default AMI. You can choose any AMI, it doesn't matter. Okay. And uh, instance type is tdu.micro that's fine i'm going to use one key pair which i've already created in the past and then i'm going to change the network so this is the critical part here okay this is what we want to learn here how to choose the right network settings for our ec2 instance so just click on edit and then choose your vpc which is my vpc and let's go back to a diagram and see where this uh, you know should be created so as you can see so this is what I want to create and this is under this, this public subnet in 1B okay so which means uh, the the uh, 1B availability zone public subnet I mean, we have to choose for this 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 bastion host okay so this is how you can relate to the diagram also if you, if you have any doubts uh, you know to create any resource you can just refer to the architecture here and then go back to AWS to create the resource as per the architecture so i'll choose uh, this public 1b or public 1b in accordance to this this diagram okay public 1b and uh, okay one more thing before i do this okay uh, okay one more thing we have to do let's go back to vpc console so let's go to vpc okay so before we create this instance we have to do some uh, 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 settings change to our subnets so just open this this uh, vpc console in another tab so whatever subnets we have created until now we have created four subnets two public subnets and two private subnets if you remember i haven't done any configuration on these subnets to make them public or private till now right i just you know wrote the name of the subnets as, as public and private i did not do any any configuration to make it you know uh when uh public or private so first we have to do that okay i mean before we create this ec2 instances i mean we have to create i mean before we create the two ec2 instances we have to change those uh, settings on the subnets to make it private or public okay how to do that just go to subnet section and then filter it with your vpc okay so you can do uh, you can type vpc here and uh, which one was ours i think this one no not this one the other one so let's do vpc again so i'm trying to filter it with my vpc only this one so this is my vpc and i have four subnets okay so to make a public subnet be a public subnet what you have to do is you have to choose this this public subnet then go to actions and then you have to click on edit subnet settings okay and here you have to enable auto assign ip settings the meaning of this is whenever you will launch any instance or any resource in this subnet that resource is going to get a public ip by default so this is the default behavior of a public subnet okay so i mean we have to uh, enable this setting here okay so i mean you have to remember all these things for your uh, uh, interview also sometimes these questions may be asked okay how how to make a public subnet a public subnet okay 
I mean, uh, what setting you have to change. So the setting is you have to choose the, I mean, you have to enable the auto assign IP settings of the subnet, which you want to make a public. Okay. So just choose this and just click on save. Okay. Similarly, we have to do for other subnet also, which is the public subnet. So just choose the other subnet, other public subnet, go to actions, go to edit subnet settings. And again, enable auto assign IP settings and just click on save. Okay. And another thing we have to do is after this, what we have to do, we have to make changes to a route table routes also, because we have created two route tables, one for public and one for private, but we haven't configured any routes, right? Because if you go back to our diagram, we need to have a route table that can have uh, access to, I mean, that can has, I mean, that can have a route out to the internet from our uh, net gateway okay connecting our uh, private resources in the, in the private subnet and other route table should have another route which is to allow uh, uh, access to internet to our our public resources in, in the public subnet using the internet gateway so uh, these things are configured in the route table okay you I mean you don't get by default okay you have to create these routes in your route table that you've created Okay, so we have two route tables, one for our, our, our private connectivity and other one for our, uh, uh, I mean for our public connectivity. So you have to specify these routes in the route table routes. Okay, so I mean how to do it? Let's go to our route tables. So I mean after I, I made changes to the uh, subnets setting, then I'm going to go to route tables. I'm going to choose the, the public route table first. Just click on route table ID here. Then under routes, just click on edit routes and here just click on add route and choose internet because we want to allow internet access to resources via NAT gateway, right? So for internet, you have to choose 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0 .0. So which means internet, all, everyone, okay? So when you want to reach to this network okay so if you see this is the destination section which means if you want to reach out to internet okay then you have to go through internet gateway the meaning of this so choose your internet gateway okay so this is the meaning of this route here if you want to go to internet okay go through this right this internet gateway so this is the the way you create routes and route table so save changes then same you have to do for other route table which is the private route table to allow the access to private resources in private subnets to go out to internet via NAT gateway. So click on route table again, choose your private route table. Just click on route table ID here. Okay, then click on edit routes. And this time again, I want to allow internet. But, uh, but uh, since uh, this is my uh, private route table, I have to allow internet via my NAT gateway. So just choose NAT gateway and you'll get the option to add it here. So if you want to go to internet, okay, then you have to go through NAT gateway, the meaning of this route, click on save changes. I hope the concepts are clear to you. Uh, so, so guys, this is, uh, I mean, all these concepts are exceptionally important to work in AWS, to clear the interview of AWS, okay, without this, you, you cannot, I mean, be in uh, AWS, you can say, okay, I mean, you, you cannot be in, uh, in a, uh, a cloud role if you don't understand these concepts to the core, okay, so if you have any doubts related to any of these concepts, okay, please put it in the comment section and I'm going to uh, come back to you with a reply, okay. But, I, but I'm, uh, I mean, I'm trying my best to make you understand this concept, but, but any, anyways, if any, anything you did not understand clearly just mention it in the in the comment section all right so the route table configuration is done and now we can go back to our launch instances section okay here just hit refresh once here and on the pc and then choose your route table once again sorry uh, your, your your subnet in which you want to launch your ec2 instance once again so it will be public 1b sorry, public 1B, this one. 
this, this uh, uh, auto sign public IP hasn't changed. So what we'll do is let, uh, let me try to create this instance once again. So I'll go to instances. I'll click on launch instance. And I'm going to write the name of the instance, Bastion. I'm going to choose the default Amazon Linux AMI. And instance type is going to remain the same. I'm going to choose one key pair. Then on network settings, I'm going to click edit. And here I want to use my VPC. And I have to choose my uh, pri uh, this uh, public 1B subnet. So public 1B and this time you can see auto sign public IP is enabled by default okay because we change the setting in the subnet itself okay so, so that's what you have to do for all the public subnets the auto sign public IP should be enabled then I get an option to create the security group but if you remember I have already created two security groups one for this bastion instance and the other one for the private EC2 instance okay so I'm going to use one existing security group so just click on this then click on this drop down menu and uh, you can use the bastion security group okay which i just created and then we don't need to do anything here just click on launch instance so our bastion instance is created okay it's going to come up it's going to take a couple of minutes to come up All right, and uh, 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 let's try to create the other instance also. So let's go to instances again. Click on launch instance. So I'm trying to create the other instance, which is the private instance. So this instance, sorry. So this instance will be launched in 1A AZ, 1A availability zone. So uh, 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 there's one private subnet. Okay, private 1A, which refers to this availability zone and, and this, this subnet as per the diagram. So this instance will be launched in a private 1A availability zone based subnet. Just go back, just type uh, private and I'm going to use the same default Amazon Linux AMI. Instance type is going to remain the same. I'm going to use the key pair of my choice. Then on network settings, I'm going to click edit. I'm going to choose my VPC and in subnet, I'm going to use private 1A as it's the default option. So private 1A is what I want, okay? So uh, so this time if you, if you see auto sign public IP is disabled. So this is the meaning, this is a private subnet. You don't even get a public IP attached to your private sources, right? So that is what we want. So this, this subnet is actually private, okay? Then, we are going to use our own security group which we have created select existing security group click on this drop down menu and choose the private security group from here and just click on launch instance all right so this is our a private instance so let's go back to our bastion instance and see if it is ready so i'll just click on this refresh instances section button and uh, the instance is still coming up Okay, it's in running status now. So just click on instance ID here. Click on connect. Click on exam, uh, just copy and copy the example command and paste it on your terminal. I'm using mobile X term, SSH client application. Okay, so I'm trying to SSH to this machine from my laptop okay why i'm able to connect to this machine from my laptop because so this network that you see okay I, i'm able to connect to this machine from a laptop why because because i'm using an internet gateway attached to the vpc in which this ec2 instance is launched and and in my route table the public route table has a route using this internet gateway to go out to internet and similarly I can SSH to this EC2 instance from my laptop using this internet gateway also, right? I mean, if, if I remove the internet gateway, this connection will not work. If I remove the internet gateway route from my public route table of this subnet, then 
I am not able, uh, I will not be able to SSH to this EC2 instance. Remember this part, okay? So that's why we, we want that route in the route table of this subnet in which this EC2 instance has been launched. Okay, so I'm able to SSH into it. Now, from here, what I want, I want to SSH to my private EC2 instance from my Bastion instance. Okay, so to SSH into this machine, I would need the private key, right? I would need the private key of, I mean, private key to SSH to this machine, right? But I don't have the private key in, in uh, I, uh, I mean, inside of my, this Bastion EC2 instance. So what I'll do is, let me just copy and paste the, the private key from here. So it's Linux demo kp.pam. So I'm going to cat the contents. Let's copy it. Let's copy the, the private key text and uh, here what i'll do is i'm going to create a file using the redirection operator and cat command and i'm going to name it as linux demo kp dot pem and i'm going to paste the private key so i have this private key here so this uh, this private key is required for me to SSH to this machine from this machine. So this machine should have the private key to SSH to this machine, right? So uh, 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 that's what I did. I just copied the the private key from my uh, laptop to this EC2 instance here, this bastion host here. So now uh, let's try to SSH to it. So what I'll do is I'll use the Let's just hit refresh if this instance is available, which is, so I'll just uh, click on the uh, instance ID of the private instance and I'm going to uh, copy the exam example command from here. And as you can see, this instance does not have a public IP, okay? This only has the private IP since it is a, it is a private resource in a private subnet. But in case of our public subnet, I mean this uh, public uh, EC2 instance, it has a public IP. This is a public IP. Okay, this is not a private IP, but this is a private IP. So this is the difference between a public instance and a private instance, okay? And this private instance can only be accessed within the VPC from this bastion host, okay? So let's see if I'm able to SSH to it or not. So I'll copy it from here. And uh, let's try to SSH to this machine, which I am. I'm sorry, I think, uh, okay. So, uh, so this is an uh, uh, interesting error here. If you see, I tried to SSH to this, this, uh, uh, this private instance from my this bastion host, but I, 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 got a, I got an error message. It says a warning, uh, unprotected private key file, and you get this permission denied option. Okay, I mean, why do you get it? Because the key that I created, Okay, this private key that I created, it has incorrect permissions. If you see, it, it has read-write permission as well okay, for the user, but we should have just, uh, just uh, the, the read permissions on this file, okay? So, uh, I mean, whenever you see this type of error, okay? So, just change the permission of your key file. Just see the permissions first. We should only have read permissions enabled on a SSH a private key file always. Okay, so since this has this uh, this write permission, we are seeing this error, this permission denied error. Okay, so what you have to do is you can do chmod. Uh, you can do u minus w, then the name of the key file. Now, if I if I check the permissions again, I will see I have only read only permissions for this key file because this is the key file and it should not have write permissions, right? It should only have the read permissions. And also, I mean, to be, you know, uh, I mean, generally speaking, these keys are actually created in a, I mean, uh, what do you call, uh, uh, like a secure repository, okay? 
like you have option of uh, HashiCorp Vault is there, then there's another option of Delinea is there, which you can use to store these credentials. But since this is only for demo purposes, I mean, uh, we're going to get this, this key manually on an instance, but in real time scenarios, I mean, you have to, uh, I mean, you will have to retrieve these keys from a secured uh, library, okay, which is there in any uh, big company uh, that is using cloud services. Anyways, so uh, let's try to SSH to this machine again, since we have changed the uh, permissions on our key file. So we should be able to SSH to it now. Let's see. Bad permissions. I'm still getting the bad permissions uh, are to open. Okay. So once again, as, as you see, so I still haven't set the right permissions on this key file and that is why it's failing. Okay. So the, the permission should be just read permissions to your user. Okay. I'm sorry. I think I, I mean, I, I used the wrong uh, command. So what I have to do is I have to remove the write permissions. I mean, the read permissions also. So let's just check the permissions again of the file. So this permission has read permissions for user group and others, but ideally what, uh, uh, AWS says that we should not have read permissions for others and groups also. So I have to remove these two permissions also. So one option is you can do chmod space 400. Okay. Then the name of the file, which means that <clears throat> you just want the read permissions for the user and no permission for group and others. Okay. This is one more way or you can, you can use chmod. You can use chmod and just specify that you want to remove uh, read permissions. Okay, that means group and others should not have read permissions from this file. Now, if I change, if I check the permissions again, it's just the user has the 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 read permissions on this key file, and group and others have no permissions. So let's just try to see if if we are able to SSH to it now. You see, I'm able to SSH to it now. Okay, so just remember that the right permissions for the key file is only the user, the user owner of the key file, which is EC2 hyphen user should have the read permissions on the key file. Okay, so that's the, the permission that we should have on your key files. So that is why it was failing earlier on, okay, because the permissions were incorrect on the key file. Okay, so I'm happy that we saw this error because so these type of things are really helpful when you're working in a real time setup. If you see this error, you, you now know I mean, what you have to do to fix the issue. All right, so I'm able to SSH into this machine, right? Now, what I want to test is I want to test if I'm able to go out to internet via this NAT gateway to download the software packages from internet to this EC2 instance, right? I mean, uh, if I'm able to do so, which means that I'm able to uh, uh, get out to internet via this NAT gateway successfully. So I just want to test that connection. So what I'll do is I'll run a command called sudo yum update, which is going to I mean, I try to update the packages on my machine. So, so, so uh, just write this, I mean, just execute this command. And you can see the command did not fail. Okay. I mean, I, I, I don't have anything to update here. So that's why I did not get anything. It says nothing to do, but the command did not fail. If you, if you want to test it one more time, you can try to install some package. So, so let's do you sudo yum install httpd. And you see, I'm able to download the packages. And if I click on yes, I will be able to download the packages. So this means that the connection, the connection is, is working from my, uh, this private EC2 instance to internet via the NAT gateway, which I have added in my route table. Okay. So, so, uh, when we are able to build this entire custom VPC architecture. Okay. There's one more thing, which is our NACL. Okay. I did not get the NACL because if you remember when you create your custom VPC, you get a default NACL attached. Okay. So let's see that, uh, this default VPC in AWS also. So let's go to VPC and, uh, let's see the 
default NACL settings also. So you can click on network ACLs from here, okay? And just try to filter it with your VPC, but uh, I mean, you can already see the the NACL from my VPC, which is this one. So just click on this ACL ID. And uh, once again, as you remember, this NACL uh, uh, controls the inbound and outbound traffic of subnets, okay? So once again, if you don't create your own NACL in your custom VPC, so all the subnets that you create inside of your VPC will be associated with the default NACL. So if I click on subnet associations here, I can see this NACL is controlling the traffic of all the subnets in my VPC because I did not create my own NACL and then attach any subnet to that, uh, that custom NACL. So in this case, the default NACL will be used to control the traffic of all the subnets in your VPC, which is the case here, as you can see. And if I go to inbound rules, I can see the default rules is to allow all the traffic, okay? And on the outbound also is to allow all the traffic. So this is the default waiver of the default NACL in your custom VPC, okay? And, and uh, it, is, it, it is able to control the traffic of all the subnets here, okay? So as you can see in the diagram here, here also, so this NACL is attached to this subnet, this subnet and this subnet and this subnet which means this is the default nacl which is already there okay so i mean we don't we don't have to create this but if you want you can create your own own uh, this uh, 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 nacl and then you can attach your uh, subnets to the new nacl and then you can test it so this is like an uh, i mean homework for you guys so uh, you, um, you can try to create your own nacl and try to associate two of the subnets out of four to that new NACL and see if, I mean, I mean how the, you know, a traffic is changing. Okay. So I mean, you can try that on your own and if you have any doubts, you can always reach out to me. Okay. So, but, but if you see here in this architecture, uh, I mean, we have this one NACL, which is the, which is the default NACL, which we got with our uh, VPC and uh, this NACL is controlling the traffic of all the four subnets, which is the case, which is the default case for us. So in this way, we have created all the resources in this architecture step by step and we've understood everything how these things are working in uh, you know in, in, inside inside our vpc all right so that's all i want you to cover in this video okay i hope you uh, I mean, you were able to understand all the concepts if you did not understand the concepts of internet gateway okay net gateway then uh, security group and acl so there's one video which i just created just before this video so uh, i mean uh, my last video covers all the concepts in you know uh, in a lot of detail so i mean you can refer to that video i mean just just try to go and and uh, watch that video first and then you can come to this video in this way i mean you'll be able to uh, i mean you'll be able to uh, learn the concepts in a better way so that's all I want to I want you to cover in this video. I hope you liked it. If you did, please hit the like button. Please share this video with others and subscribe to my channel. All right, guys, I'm going to end the video now and I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye.